What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys we finally did it we took out amos the lunar arch on rotation two and rotation two was way way harder than rotation one um more limited on the champions that we could use um but i actually come this pretty accessible team comp we've got two champions that play him just gave us for free yeah, with oma death knight and wukong then we've got two fusion champions with Uko and Morgane. And then we've got Godseeker, who's a Void Epic. And I'm just going to stick Uko in the lead. Uh, I was just trying some other stuff out, seeing if, um, you know, having increased defense helped more than speed. I feel like speed is the better way to go. You can try both. Um, but yeah, and so if we look at the Awakenings, you know, we're pretty low on stars. Uh, if you ignore Wukong, so, you know, we've got uh, no stars on Uko, one star on Ultima Death Knight, uh, two stars on Morgane, and then three on Godseeker. Wukong, there was an event to get five stars, and, you know, then I finished him off. Um, you know, all those stars are going to do on Wukong is help with damage, uh, giving us more crit damage and more attack. So it does help, but it's not essential. Probably could get away with three. Um, but yeah, but the rest of the team, just having two champions with that smite is going to help a lot. Saying that, we only landed smite about five times. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucks. If I had three stars, we should definitely land it a hell of a lot more. But because we don't, obviously it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so it was a 12 minute run. And let's go for it, boys. Um, and then we'll have a look at the gear and the masteries. Um, this rotation is a lot more simple. Um, we're just going to... There's there's two ways you can do this as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to buff up here. And basically, if there's a four or a three, so if he's on turn three or four, and you can see that up here, then we can use our buffs. Outside of that, it's a no-go. We cannot use our buffs at all. Going to save Godseeker's A2 for the AoE heal. Um, I'm always going to try and land that um, decrease attack with Uko as much as possible. Ulma Death Knight, we can only put Continuous Heal and the Shield on uh, turn four or three. Otherwise, he's going to turn around and just put Heal Reduction on us and just, you know, smack away. And we're going to struggle because we can't use our regen gear. Wukong, we're always going to use that A2 as much as possible. And it's going to hit between um, 200 and like 280k to 70k. Obviously, it depends on how strong your Wukong is. Mine is not in the best of gear. So we've landed that um, decrease attack. And the boss is probably going to switch to increase attack. There we go. So... Now we need to um, remove that so we can steal it with Uko. I mean, he can steal, he can strip, and Morgane can steal as well. Then Ulma Death Knight with a backup decrease attack coming in. Nice, landed it. And that's pretty much it. So we just sort of cycle around and just do the same thing again and again. Um, on this turn, uh, Wukong is going to eat all of those... Um, basically single target hitters he's going to be eating it all day long i mean he's an absolute beast like considering he's a nuke kong he's eating that really nicely and it's not doing too much damage to him either um here we in this form we cannot use um continuous hill it is gonna screw us over um a really thing that's important is we need to make sure that morgana sorry morgana we're not playing League of Legends. We're playing Raid. Um, so Morgane, um, she needs to be tanky. You do not want her to die. If she dies, that heal reduction is going to come off and it's going to make it really, really hard. Ooh, we can't, we can't use the continuous heal. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to make things really, really difficult. And we can't have that. It's just going to be very, very difficult because if she goes... Um, you know, this boss can just heal up like a machine. And yeah, it's just going to increase the time for your runs. 
But yeah, like for me, I feel like Wukong is the MVP. Like literally just eating hits all day long. And he's just such a boss. You know, who doesn't love Wukong? Um, the other thing you can do is if you wanted to, I just prefer for Wukong to tank it on, um, on the second form. However, if you wanted to, you could force the boss with Morgane and just for our um, increased speed just before he switches forms. And that way the whole team will get um, slows put on them. But then you could, um, you know, open up with heals from Ultimate Death Knight. So that is an option. That's a different way you could play it. But I prefer, you know, I just prefer the more simple way of just keeping it like this and just having Wukong tank all those hits. And let me just talk through all the champions as well. Let's just do that as well. So obviously Godseeker, A1's providing a lot of healing. A2, we're saving for when we need a big heal. Um, her passive is not going to be too useful because Wukong is going to die so much that, you know, he's just going to be the one that wastes it. It is what it is. And then... Um, but she does have that single target heal as well, which is really going to come in clutch. Uh, Morgane, she, you know, obviously, she is an amazing champion for this with the heal reduction. But she's also, you know, she can still um, bust from the boss as well. And she's boosting Termia and also having that increased speed as well. Uko, I use him in last rotation. He's amazing for this. Though, obviously, Constantly, he's going to be throwing out that decrease attack. He can steal. He can block buffs if we need to. And that AoE revive can come in clutch. So last time when I tried this, I did uh, almost wipe. But luckily, Godseeker revived Uko. Uko revived the team. And that was it. We were golden and good to go. And then, obviously, Wukong just hard hitting and just, you know, again, just tanking it all day long. Then we've got um, Ulmer Death Knight, who's basically just going to be doing healing at the right time and just throwing out that decrease attack. So, yeah, it's a 12-minute run. I think this one's going to be a lot longer because I've been talking so much. So, um, I'm, you know, I don't think I can talk for that long. But I'll be back in a minute, guys, and show you the end result. And we're back, guys. All right, we're getting really close now. Um, the boss is going to switch forms, so hoping, you know, Nothing, you know, it's not going to catch us off guard and we're going to wipe. Just need to be careful. You cannot kill the boss in this form. Otherwise, he's going to self-revive. And we've got two turns if you look to the left. So just need to survive just a little bit longer. And yeah, just hopefully we can land a Smite or Wukong can do some insane damage. Um, we did have um, a Soul Reap proc. So, you know, didn't really want that to uh, kill him in the wrong form. So that was nice. Okay. Just going to try. Come on. Let's land a smite. Oh. Okay. Just need to heal up. Come on, Wu. Oh, no. Oh, this is going to be tight really need to try and land some form of sm yes woo wukong my boy that's it guys nice so you know not bad considering how much i was talking at the beginning um we still managed it in 11 minutes so amazing let's just wow look at the damage from wukong 3.3 million damage um maybe i was wrong about the stars it does help i mean obviously he's a hard carry for this uh, Ulmer, Death Knight, and Morgane, not doing too much damage, but obviously those smite procs are helping a lot. And again, if they just had, you know, a little more stars, that would make a huge difference. All right, guys, let's just go check out the gear and the masteries, and I hope this is going to help a lot of people out there be able to clear this pain in the Amos. First on the list is Wukong, and you can see it's a very basic build, just in lethal and then a broken set. And I'll just quickly go through... The gloves, terrible ascension, but yeah, just looking for speed and crit rate um, and then attack percentage as well and crit damage, uh, substats. 
and then we've got attack on the ring crit damage on the amulet and then attack on the banner and he's not in particularly amazing gear obviously that six star ascension has bumped up his attack to 6.7k which is pretty insane um but like i said he's not in particularly good gear uh 41k hp almost no defense but you saw he's still tanking it pretty slow at 212 speed and then almost 300 crit damage of course we've gone for soul reap he's fully booked um masteries just very very standard um arena build i mean it's, it's probably one of my favorite ways to go um the only difference is that we've gone for cycle of violence instead of opportunist just because there's a very good chance that he could reset his a2 then next on the list is morgane so she is in defiant and regeneration and defiant carries really hard like reducing that aoe damage is huge and also i'm um, helping us stack up some defense as well uh, substats we're looking for are just speed and accuracy as primary and then we want to look for um, hp and defense percentage and that i think that's pretty much for most of the other champions and um, so we've got hp percentage on the gloves um accuracy on the chest piece and we have to get accuracy um ascension as well i mean you need so much accuracy for this it is insane uh speed on the boots uh hp on the ring hp on the amulet and then accuracy on the banner so 73k hp 2.7k defense 261 speed so you do want her to be nice and fast uh, and then 458 accuracy it's a it does need to be a little bit higher than that um still getting resistances but you know it is what it is uh, she is not even fully booked um so it'd be nice for all the books to be in the a3 it would help a lot um but then yeah the rest don't matter too much for this boss so actually we only need books in the a3 uh masteries you don't need to finish them again it would help you know you could take cycle of violence or you could go for retribution um but yeah she has very very specific masteries for this uh defense tree is just all about survivability and then support tree making sure we do not take cycle of magic um otherwise that could proc the boss to just smash the team and it'll be a wipe and eagle eye i feel is so essential for this getting that extra 50 um accuracy is pretty much essential it's so hard to get the stats without it so did i miss someone no no we're still good ultimate death knight so i'm lucky enough to have two ultimate death knights um i feel like i would definitely if you use ultimate death knight in arena i mean he's amazing there but being able to clear amos every like sort of second rotation is really important so you could either do the gear switch or i would just keep him specifically for this boss um pve is always more important than pvp but pvv is always more fun than pve um yeah so we've got speed and regeneration again um substats we're looking for are speed and accuracy first then hp then defense so HP on the gloves, uh, accuracy on the chest, HP on the boots, HP on the ring, HP on the amulet. And you can see it's only a five-star piece as well. And then a six-star banner. But again, um, yeah, not, not the best. Like, you know, no subs with HP, uh, only one roll in speed and then flat attack. But it's more, it's more about, you know, just sort of trying to reach these stats. So 70k HP. 2.9k defense 225 speed and then 477 accuracy and yeah i almost fully booked him out um it would just help to have in here just in case we do need to land that uh, backup decrease attack uh, don't need any books in the a1 and then masteries we didn't even finish them and you can see that i've sort of left two spaces here that's because i just wanted to be careful because you don't want to take something like the re like shadow hill isn't very good um the problem with shadow hill is if you heal the boss is going to heal so you don't want to take shadow hill and then i didn't want to take any like rapid response or arcane celebrity 
just because I don't want to mess around with my turn meter. So that's why I sort of skip this row. And I just feel like Bloodthirst isn't going to help us either. Um, obviously, um, you know, Cycle of Magic again, skip. And I just didn't, I don't know, none, none of these are really going to help. I guess we could take Solidarity, but again, it's only, it's like five resistance. It's, it's not going to help that much. Um, but again, yeah, making sure we take that Eagle Eye. Uh, then we've got Uko in Regeneration and Perception. Um, he's still usable in Hydra in this build, but he just won't be as good as if he was in Hex or Provoke. But still, still pretty sick build. Again, the speed, the accuracy, then the HP, then the defense. Uh, HP on the gloves, really, really nice gloves. Um, accuracy chest piece. Speed on the boots with a sub in accuracy. Uh, HP on the ring with a triple roll in defense. Nice uh, defense amulet with um, subs in accuracy. And then a nice accuracy banner with double rolls in speed. Uh, total stats, 57k HP, 2.8k defense, 249 speed, and then 481 accuracy. Uh, fully booked. And then masteries. Again, just sort of avoiding this part. I just feel like, you know, it's just not worth it. And again, just defense and support. Pretty much, you know, almost all these champions have pretty much the same build. And then Cycle Revenge is just nice because if you take a big hit, you're going to boost that turn meter. And then we're using my Sand Devil God Seeker. So again, it's great if you can get a champion to fill two roles. So she's in Regen in Immortal. And yeah, she doesn't need accuracy. So for her, it's just speed, HP percentage, and defense percentage. That's what we're looking for. So HP percentage on the gloves, uh, HP on the chest, uh, HP on the boots. And there's two five-star pieces there. So, you know, it is achievable. Um, defense on the ring, uh, defense on the amulet, and then HP on the banner. Total stats, 78k HP, 300, 300, 3,000, 3.5k defense, 2, 262 speed. Get it together, real deal. Um, and that's it. That's all that, that matters. Um, she is fully booked, you know, epics, not so hard to do. She's got Miracle Hill as well, which isn't going to help too much with this, but we are getting some extra stats as well. And this is going to get a buff soon as well. So I'm hoping when, you know, we get uh, those blessing buffs, this is going to make it a lot easier because we will get HP and defense percentage as well. And then masteries. These are very, very specific masteries for Sand Devil, but of course it's working here as well. So no need to change it. That is one of the issues though. There is cycle of magic here. Um, she doesn't need cycle of magic to be honest. So actually maybe I should take that out and that would actually give this like a much easier run. But um, yeah, so it's only on one champion and we're getting away with it. However, yeah, you should remove it. So I didn't realize that. I didn't check. I didn't check until now. But anyway, hope this really helps some of you guys. Uh, please let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in the video soon. Peace.